In this video, we will discuss fuel loading. You will learn what fuel loading is. How is fuel loading measured and utilized to predict potential fire behavior? And the fuel load characteristics in various vegetation types. 1. What is fuel loading? Whether fighting a wildfire or planning a prescribed burn, one of the most important factors fire managers need to consider is fire behavior. This involves an understanding of the amount of fuel present and is commonly referred to as fuel loading. Whether directly measured or simply estimated, resulting values can be used in mathematical calculations to determine potential fire behavior. Fuel loading can be defined in various ways depending on the specific fire behavior calculations to be made and can be expressed as a single total value. It can also be broken down by fuel type, location, size, and condition, even in the same fuel bed. The most common types are total fuel load, fine fuel load, available fuel load, canopy fuel load, and net fuel load. Each is measured as mass per unit of area or volume, typically tons per acre, kilograms per square meter, metric tons per hectare, pounds per cubic yard, or kilograms per cubic meter. With the exception of measurements of available fuel load, these values should reflect 0% moisture content, so the weight of any moisture should be deducted. 2. How is fuel loading measured and utilized? We'll now discuss fuel load measurements in more detail. Each measurement provides insight into particular types of fire behavior. Total fuel load is a measure of the largest amount of fuel that can be consumed in a fire burning under the most extreme conditions and with the most severe fire behavior. It can estimate the potential severity of a fire and was part of one of the earliest fire behavior calculations. Now this value is more often used to predict fire behavior under less severe circumstances when incorporated into fire behavior modeling systems such as BEHAVE and Farsight. Although it sounds like a measure of the total biomass of an area, total fuel load does not include large tree bowls and limbs since these are not consumed even in fires of extreme intensity and severity. Fine fuel load. Some fire behavior models incorporate only fine fuels into their calculations. These are fuels less than one quarter inch or six millimeters in diameter, such as a field of grass or a bed of pine needles. These are the most likely to form a continuous fuel bed consumed in the flaming front of a surface fire. Fine fuel loading can also be used to provide an estimate of the potential intensity of the flaming front, which is one of the standard measures of fire behavior. This can be calculated by Byram's formula, I equals HWR, where I is a measure of the energy released during combustion by a portion of the flaming front per unit of time. H is the heat content of the fuel, W is the fine fuel load, and R is the fire's rate of spread. Available fuel load. Simply put, some fuels may be too wet to burn and are unavailable, while others are dry enough to catch fire and are considered to be available. In dead fuels, availability is largely determined by season of the year, fuel size, and atmospheric moisture patterns. In the case of live fuels, availability is more dependent on the plant's phase of growth, its chemical composition, and recent rainfall patterns. Separate videos exist that present a detailed description of fuel moisture patterns for both living and dead fuels. Canopy fuel load. Predictive models for crown fire potential have been developed for various forest types around the world, but all rely to some extent on estimating the amount of fine fuel contained in the canopy. Although this information can be difficult to obtain during an actual fire, it can be an important pre-fire planning tool, allowing forest managers to assess the potential risk of a crown fire and plan actions to reduce that risk, usually by forest thinning to increase spacing between trees, by reducing ladder fuels, and by reducing surface fuels. Net fuel load is a measure of the total biomass of a fuel bed that can be expected to undergo combustion during a fire. This is something of a refinement of total fuel load since it deducts biomass not likely to burn, such as tree bowls and large limbs. But it also removes one other factor. All plants contain some portion of non-flammable minerals. 
although it can vary significantly from species to species. As a rule of thumb, this mineral content is considered to be 5.55% of the total dry weight. After all other factors have been removed, the remaining mass is considered to be the net fuel loading. Other fuel load measurements have been developed and are in use around the world to meet specific needs. These include the proportion of live fuel versus dead fuel, fuel load consumption, which is a post-fire measurement, fuel load contributing to convection, bark and foliage fuel loading, which is necessary when these materials contribute greatly to fire behavior, such as some of the eucalyptus forests in Australia, litter fuel loading, and duff fuel loading. Separate videos will cover the various sampling methods used for inventorying fuels, but briefly, these range from direct field inventories, the use of photo series as comparisons, and more recently, the use of remote sensing. Three, the fuel load characteristics in various vegetation types. This is a very complex topic that is not easily generalized. Broadly speaking, we can present some general figures of fuel loading for the three most common vegetation types grasslands, shrublands, and forests. Grasslands have the lowest total fuel load, typically no more than a few tons per acre, and often less than a ton. Available fuel load can range from essentially zero in green, uncured grasses to an amount equal to the total fuel load in dried grasses. Total fuel loading in shrublands can vary widely depending on the plant species and the age of the stand. For instance, total fuel loads in very old chaparral communities in Southern California may be well over 50 tons per acre, and in some instances up to nearly 100 tons per acre. Communities dominated by smaller shrubs, such as chemise, can range from 5 to 35 tons per acre. Available fuel load in shrublands is highly dependent on the live fuel moisture content. In general, shrubland live fuels only start to become available when the moisture content drops below 100% of dry fuel weight. Unfortunately, when it comes to forest biomes, it is impossible to generalize, there being so many forest types and their fuel characteristics being so diverse. For instance, tropical rainforests have very little duff fuel loading to influence combustion and fire effects, while boreal forests may have massive duff fuel loadings that can strongly influence both. Some forests, such as ponderosa pines in the western United States and the eucalypt forests in Australia, promote an environment of frequent fire, on the order of three to five years in some cases, by rapidly creating a continuous fine fuel bed. While the normal fire return interval for other forests, such as high elevation lodgepole pine communities, may be several hundred years long. In short, this brief video on fuel loading is not about to tackle the fuel dynamics of forest ecosystems. To wrap up, determining fuel loading is an important consideration in predicting future fire behavior, whether for an active wildfire, anticipating future fire intensity and severity, or planning a prescribed burn. With this knowledge, sound decisions can be made. Without it, the potential fire behavior becomes all the more unpredictable. 